Welcome to this Killick Explains video and welcome to the fourth video and the final video in my equity analysis series. As a reminder, video one was all about what is equity analysis, video two was all about the price to earnings ratio, video three was balance sheet focus, the price to book ratio. So this video turns our attention to cash flow and the price to cash flow ratio. Now, quick summary. In part one, we talked about the importance of not overpaying for good businesses and then hanging on to them for the long term. So not overpaying is all about finding value for money. Doesn't necessarily mean super cheap, but value for money. Uh, we're gonna use multiples to help us, such as the PE, such as the PB, and here the price to cash flow ratio. And the fundamental principle of using multiples is that low tends to be good, it's not always the best, but low tends to be good when we've done our benchmarking and our homework against other metrics, whether by peer group, history, management expectations, and so on. So price to cash flow basics. Now I'm gonna cover a lot of ground fairly quickly here. So cash flow is seen by many analysts as the purest measure of value. Cash is king is the old cliche. And that's because you can't argue with cash goes the saying. I mean, a PE ratio, for example, uh, reflects subjective earnings in some way. Price to book ratios reflect uh, balance sheets that may have valuation missing. But this is a pure measure of value. Cash is king, you've either got it or you haven't. So the argument goes that it's less subjective than earnings, all right? And what we're gonna try and do is compare then the current share price to some kind of cash flow metric to get a feel as to whether the company is cheap or expensive on a multiple basis. Now, what is cash flow? That's a key question. Well, if you look at a cash flow statement, opinion divides on this. If you go for the bottom number, that's operating cash flow from the heart of the business, minus, if you like, the uh, interest costs and so on, minus funding, you hit the net cash flow number. And some people do price to cash flow on a net basis, others, prefer to look for the free cash flow number. They prefer to say, what is the number that management has then the discretion to pay out in the form of dividends and so on? So what is the operating cash flow adjusted for essential capital expenditure uh, and one or two other items that have to be paid? But whichever measure you go for, and it's important to look at which one's being used, if you like, because some analysts prefer one over the other, the question you're asking in cash flow terms is how long will it take to get my money back. Uh, essentially, the bigger the multiple, the longer that period may be. So fundamentally, very crudely, low is good, high, not so good, potentially. And the other thing to bear in mind with this number in particular, it can be a useful check on other numbers. So if you're somebody who likes PE ratios, price to cash flow ratios can give you a way of sort of judging the quality of the first number. Now, there are some traps. I said cash is king at the beginning of this video, but is that strictly true? First of all, you are using a single number here. So price to cash flow, price to earnings, price to book. They're all just little snapshots in isolation, a little bit dangerous to lean on them too heavily. Cash flow can be volatile. I mean, earnings can swing around, but so can cash flow. You get seasonality. So for example, companies often get a lot of cash flowing in at certain times a year, pre-Christmas for argument's sake, and that can influence the snapshot view of cash flow and the cash flow part of the price to cash flow multiple. Seasonality can affect some businesses more than others. As I've just mentioned, that's important to bear in mind and cash can be fudged. Now, what do I mean by that? To give you a very simple example, if a finance director is anxious uh, to show more cash flow when they cut off at the end of a financial year and prepare their accounts, what they might do is call in cash from debtors, people who owe them money, and hold off paying cash to creditors. So the business, in the very short term, gives the impression of being more liquid than it actually is in reality. That's not a trick you can pull multiple years consecutively, but it is a way to window dress, as it's called, the financial statements where cash flow is concerned. Now that's a big topic, and frankly, there is a lot more to know about it. So if you'd like to know a bit more, then my extensive library is killick.com forward slash learn, and uh, you can find a shares tab, for example, you can find a ratios tab down that side. There's also my guide on how to invest in equities, a light blue cover, 
the other guides uh, take on other topics. Uh, that will be editor at killick.com if you want to sort of read all about it. And then the third place you could go is the quarterly magazine, which I edit next to me called Confidant. The equity research team often put a fairly meaty contribution in there. And for a copy of that, hard copy or digital, it would be editor at killick.com.